Well, this is kind of wild. I don't think anyone really saw this coming if this is actually true. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Stellantis, beleaguered Stellantis. I'd say in trouble Stellantis, sales going down almost every quarter Stellantis. Well, they're saying they have a solid state battery that is almost about to come out. They provided the energy density, really interesting. Charging speed, not that good. Operating temperature range, good, but not as good as, say, CATL's new batteries. But the energy density is really the key here, and it's pretty damn impressive. I think if Stellantis are telling the truth and this, this battery comes out next year, they're going to have a bit of a surprise. I mean, this is going to be like the market's going to say, hang on a minute, really? Well, yeah, and this is true, but at the same time, factorial, they are the actual company that own these batteries. It's not Stellantis. Stellantis and factorial successfully validated automotive size solid state battery cells. Energy density is 375 watt hours per kilogram. That's pretty good. I mean, that's actually very high. For example, as energy density of, say, a traditional lithium ion phosphate battery, the best ones out of the market right now, it's about 200 to 210 watt hours per kilogram. So it's actually double the energy density of the current BOD blade battery. Charging speed is not as impressive as I expected, though. 15 to 90% charge takes 18 minutes. So it's a bunch of batteries that you can buy now in China that can charge in about half that speed, actually. But anyway, it's still pretty good. Stellantis and Factorial last year announced plans to put solid state batteries into a fleet of Dodge Charger Day toners by 2026. And that development is coming closer. Apparently, the companies have successfully validated automotive sized solid state battery cells with an energy density of 375 watt hours per kilogram. This would mean they can put much smaller battery packs in these cars and make them much lighter. One of the problems with the Dodge Charger Daytona is they're quite heavy. It's quite a heavy vehicle, big, big battery packs. They could probably reduce the size of the batteries by 30% and still get more range if they're able to use these batteries. Now, the automaker said they validated 77 amp hour FEST, factorial electrolyte system technology cells, over 600 cycles. The cycling is the problem with solid state batteries. They don't last for enough cycles. They said they're validating them over 600 cycles and they're progressing towards automotive qualification. Don't know exactly what that means, but Stellantis said this is a milestone for large format lithium metal solid state batteries. To be honest, it's not really a milestone for Stellantis. It's more of a milestone for factorial. If this is true, factorial stock price could be about to go I mean, right up. Besides having an impressive, or actually very good energy density, solid state batteries allow for significant reduction in charging time. And they also allow for huge improvements. I think solid state batteries, the theoretical energy density is probably 10 times higher than these batteries, what they're at. So they could continue to improve them. Charging speed is good, but not epic at 15% to 90% in 18 minutes. I mean, it is really good compared to batteries in today's electric cars, but based on some of the new batteries we've seen coming out of China, it's just good, not really good. The cells promise to deliver very high power output with discharge rates at up to 4C, supporting greater performance demands in electric vehicles. In other words, that'd be perfect for, say, a performance car, a supercar, a hypercar, they'd be ideal where you want to put out massive amounts of power as quickly as possible. The other advantage they have is they're clearly pretty good in cold temperatures. Not sure about, about hot temperatures. This, this is a bit of a concern for me. Factorial's latest electrolyte formula allows operational temperatures between minus 22 degrees Fahrenheit and 113 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's minus 30 degrees Celsius up to only 45 degrees celsius that's too low in my opinion i mean i think that your car could get that hot just sitting in a car park in a lot of countries around the world 45 degrees celsius so that needs to be improved but i mean obviously the cold weather temperature is fantastic minus 30 degrees celsius minus 22 degrees fahrenheit that's really good the heat part of it is still clearly an issue Solantis's chief engineering and technology officer said this, this breakthrough puts us at the forefront of the solid state revolution, but we are not stopping there. He's making it sound like they're making the batteries when it's factorial. We continue working together to push the boundaries and deliver even more advanced solutions, bringing us closer to lighter, more efficient batteries, 
They reduce costs for our customers. So my prediction that within about 10 to 12 years from now, batteries will be about half the weight of what they are today. I mean, enormous improvement in efficiency and also it will improve range. His sentiments were echoed by Factorial Energy CEO, Soyu Hung, who said battery development is about compromise while optimizing one feature is simple, balancing high energy density, cycle life, fast charging, and safety in automotive sized battery with OEM validation is a breakthrough. And he's right. This achievement with Solantis is bringing next gen battery tech from research to reality. Now I should point out, there is one other solid state battery company that we know their batteries are in electric cars being tested today as well, and that is Samsung. So Samsung have apparently within the last six to 12 months deployed their solid state batteries in a, a few different brand electric cars, brand cars from two different two, two different brands. And apparently that development is going moving quite quickly. We could see solid state batteries. I think the most likely time we'll actually see full we don't have any full solid state batteries in the market now in any electric cars worldwide. There's none. We do have semi solid state, but I think they're pretty pointless. I think we'll see full solid state batteries come out in cars, production cars in early 2027. That's my prediction based on everything I've been hearing. But what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? How do you see the future going with solid state batteries? Let us know in the comments. There's been reports that Samsung solid state batteries are being tested in electric cars. I don't know which brands are testing them, but apparently it's happening. So if you were to buy an electric car in say a year or two's time with a solid state battery from Samsung, how much range would you actually get out of that electric car? Well, here are the numbers based on the data we have from Samsung. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. To give you some context, guys, my EV, the Xpeng G6, it has an 87 kilowatt hour battery and it, it gets around 570 kilometers of range, right? 570 kilometers. So that is 354 miles of range. If you put smaller wheels on it, it'll get more range than that. Anyway, it's got 20 inch wheels, just for some context. Now, if you were to use Samsung's solid state battery in this car, and let's say the battery was exactly the same size, about an 87 kilowatt hour size battery, what kind of range would I expect to get? Well, considering the energy density, range should theoretically be around 1,000 kilometers or around 600 miles. That's quite a lot, yeah? And also considering the fact these batteries can charge in around 10 minutes, you can see why there's a lot of excitement, especially from myself lately, seeing some of these batteries actually um, become what looks like very, very close to being reality. When Samsung announced the pivot to solid state battery chemistry and production research, it pegged, it said 2025 was the year it would have its first prototypes and 2027 was their deadline for those batteries going into EVs. But it looks like they're actually a little bit of ahead of schedule. 